right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Simple secrets to making a great steak and a classic Kentucky dessert. I'm Kevin Harnett at the renovated Louisville Marriott East, where inside you'll find an innovative restaurant called Chard. And right now, the top chef from Chard is joining us to reveal the secrets to his amazing flank steak and berry spoon bread. It's all happening in front of a live studio audience at Sullivan University. So why don't you say we get this show started? It's Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. From Kitchen Theater at Sullivan University, this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live with your host, Kentucky's own Kevin Harden and America's Chief Entertaining Officer, Tim Laird. Here now, ready to reveal the secrets. Kevin Harnett. Hi everybody, Kevin Harnett with you on Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live, where we're always taking you to the city's best restaurants. And we found another gem this time. This is Chard, inside the Louisville Marriott East, where you'll find great steak, along with other classic dishes made famous at America's great hotels. We've invited the top chef here to join us in our kitchen theater to reveal some of his secrets, and he's accepted. So let's get cooking. Chief Entertaining Officer Tim Laird is standing by at Sullivan University with our special guest and is ready to reveal the secrets. Tim? Thank you, Kevin. I'm excited. It's going to be a great day to be at Kitchen Theater because we have a great chef, renowned chef, that's now joining us at the restaurant Chard. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on Chef Ryan Montgomery from Chard. Hello, Chef. How you doing? Good, 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 good. I'll tell you, what a great place. I just, uh, I, I'll tell you, it's just incredible what you're doing down there. Tell me a little bit about Chard. How would you describe the restaurant? It's the inside of a bourbon barrel, which is Chard, and the outside of uh, most steaks or meat, the heavy char, like a grill effect. And uh, so we use a lot of bourbon, a lot of smoke, and a lot of just uh, old school technique. Like, well, uh, we're getting ready to bottle our own Kentucky Chow Chow, which is a little passe, but you know, we're trying to bring some of those things back. You bet. Oh, that's exciting. I tell you, and what are you going to do for us today, Chef? We're going to start with something that is kind of where I came from, which oh, is excellent. French cooking. Very good. You know? um, in uh, in France, they uh, uh, they have the bistro, which is a Russian word for German word for bistra now. And uh, when uh, obviously during the war, the the Germans would turn all their coffee shops into now. now. And we're going to cook a flank steak, which bavette is what they call it in French, and it's traditionally served with shallots and demi. So, so there it is. And like I said, and here's one of your secrets again. Pack with those uh, crosshatch uh, marks. Just you want a nice mark yeah, here and just over a little bit so they're all close together. Yeah, you can turn it and make your marks like, wow, yeah. I scored, I did it. Yeah. And then, uh, um, then just try to just keep, keep moving it around a little bit. Sure. This has only been marinated for about four hours, and when you taste it, it was just, you know, another thing I want to show you. Um, it was just four hours in that marinade, and it really was influenced by that. And another thing, too, and I didn't put it on for this segment, is I've been using bourbon so much, I put a little bourbon in it. Oh, it there it is. Good. There's the secret. Yeah. All right, we're all for that. And then since we're, you know, see, we're getting this, uh, this, this effect, this my art effect, and we, we did do our pretty lines. Yeah, we, we scored. Yeah, scored. And, uh, but we're going to turn it back over and get a little more caramelization on it. That'd right? be great. And we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about the color because the color of the steak downstairs is you know fine. But I just wanna I wanna bring it over and cut it because yep. I think that's important. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the steak. And All right. It's called acquiet or bias cut. Generally, one of the most important things to really really cooking your steak is is I would really want a little more caramelization on here. But you know for the purpose of what we're doing and most importantly what we want to see is the cut. Um, we won't worry about that. So anyway, you want your steak to rest is my whole point, is to sit. That's where it really comes up. Once it has that right. heat, you know, at, uh, at any steakhouse that I've worked at, we've, we've, we've held the steak. You cook the steak, say you want it rare yep. or mid-rare. You cook it to rare plus, let it rest. All the, okay. all the so extra blood will run out, you know, on a screen. We have a screen, let it run out, and then you reheat it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the trick is really... So that's kind of a trick to... So letting you can do these it, a little rest. bit ahead of time and then uh, Absolutely. come back and re Absolutely. Like, say you're throwing a dinner party and you want, you want your steaks to be perfect. Yes. Uh, they're going to be here in an hour, but you don't know when you're eating. You know, yeah. you, know you got one of your cocktails, you might be taking, you know, <laughs> you might want a couple more. So you let that rest, that mid-rare steak, and yeah. you're, you're never going to go over medium. You're never, you know, so it's, it's really the best way to do it. That's a great tip. So okay. a lot of people are going to cut this way. We'll just start right. this in and cut straight down, which is fine. But... It, <laughs> 
Thanks. A really nice thing to learn is this acquiet or bias cut. And it's literally just hold your, this is my hand now. The, the more I got, the, I, I, I learned to use, oh, this, yeah. became, this becomes your replacement, you know, for your hand when, you, when you're working in a production kitchen and really fast. So as you see, I'm using it like it's my, that knife that I learned to hold, right? And that's the only time, I, even to date, that I cut towards my hand with a knife because generally I have uh, like sashimi or, or, or sushi knives and they're all so sharp. If I slip, and you're cut. So, and then I, I you know, yeah, I'm not really worried <laughs> of the cut. I'm, I, I lose my steak. So yeah, that's. So I hold chef, it. I hold chefs it. are tough. It's all about saving the meat. That's the right. key. Right. So see, as I hold it flat. Yeah. And that's how we cut the nice thin. Oh my God! Almost prosciutto-esque pieces. I like that prosciutto-esque. Yeah. And that, that you is. Know, my grandmother said you should be able to read the newspaper through it, eh? Oh. All right, Grandma. <laughs> she didn't read the newspaper. <laughs> So, and then a nice thing like, um, that I like to do with, uh, we talked about the Maillard effect and the, the caramelization, is almost any cut of meat, especially anything with a little fat or anything with a lot of fat through it, yeah. is I take my ribeyes and I take a whole ribeye, I season it, and I cook it, in, I sear it, I cook it in the oven to about 110, I put it in a cooler. Wow, okay. I cut steaks out of it and then I grill them. So that fiber is, that, that, that might is broken down. So I have this incredibly tender steak and again, a choice cut. So buying whole steaks and loins and roasting them. So if you take these, you get a lot of color on your grill, you get some color, you put them in the cooler, then you slice them, and then you grill them in front of people. Works out really nice too. Oh. So like, see, we can take these cuts, because some people Perfect. don't like the yeah. rare, but we cooked it rare and let it rest. So that's the best way to have this, this piece of meat be tender. So if we chill it, bring it out, and we can bring it up to almost any temperature immediately back on the grill like this, now, right? that is a great secret, because then, right. again, you have people that like it all different kinds of ways, so again, now you can do this to demand, right? Yep. If you, somebody likes it a little more uh, well done, okay, you'll leave it on there longer, uh, just a little bit more uh, done, just uh, after it's been chilled, cut, just right on the, gr great idea, chef. It works you have out. All, by the way, you're giving all our, your secrets away, I'll tell you, we love this. <laughs> All right. That's great. Well, oh. that's the steak. All right. I'll tell you what. That looks great. Fantastic. <laughs> Chef Ryan Montgomery from Chard. By the way, stay with us. It's coming up, a great dessert. A little spoon bread, so you won't want to miss that. So stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. I'm Kevin Harned, and we're coming to you from two different places. I'm at the Louisville Marriott East, where it's been newly renovated, and in the kitchen theater is where we've been watching Ryan Montgomery reveal his secrets to a flank steak. Uh, coming up next, it's time for my favorite part of the show. Personally, it's dessert. What do you say we continue with our own host, Tim Lair? Thank you, Kevin. Yes, Ryan Montgomery from Chard Restaurant is here. I'll tell you what, even desserts. And uh, this is a fun one right now. First of all, and, and we were talking earlier at the break that uh, uh, pastry and chefs, a lot of times, this is a whole art amongst itself. Either right. you, 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 you know the meat side of it and this side of the cooking and uh, grilling, but pastry is a little uh, dangerous over here. Well, yeah, it is. It is scary. No, it's not. It's really scary. scary. <laughs> I, I think the, the the thing is 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 obviously repetition in anything okay. you do, but not being scared of the pastry, being like, you know, I really want that end result, right? And just focus on the end result, and um, something that's very simple. And what we're going to do is a spoon bread, and all the ingredients, boom, all the kids in the pool, and you just stir it up, put it on. We start off with eight ounces of melted butter. Okay. That's getting there. That's always a good start. It's shall. a little gelat. <laughs> all right, and we're going to have. Let's see, uh, two cups of sugar. Should we put the sugar in? Yeah, two cups of sugar. The flour and the buttermilk is going to go in later. And that is perfect. That's there perfect, actually. And my measuring spoons. One teaspoon of vanilla. We'll just go ahead and put that in. Okay. Um, let's see, one teaspoon of baking powder. Actually, it's a half. So we'll put a half of that in there. Yeah, very good. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Just go you know, for it. I always say a little salt. So we got a little bit uh, uh, baking uh, uh, powder. We got a little bit of our baking soda. We got a little bit of um, 
lemon zest, our vanilla, a pinch of salt. Do you want the uh, butter in there now, or do you want to wait? Yeah, go ahead. All right, this whole thing? Yeah, just dump. All right, here this we go. Is eight ounces of butter. Eight ounces of butter going in. Excellent. Bada bing. Bada boom. Hey. So we're gonna we're gonna mix this till it gets uh, the sugar. Can you you know see that the sugar? We're just gonna beat it up till it's smooth. That's another Chicago thing they do. Yeah. If, if you don't pay your bets, you get beat, they up. beat it up. <laughs> just well, Mike, that's just where the kidding. word '86 came from, right? Taking the last bus out of Chicago, the '86. Oh, is that what it, you're kidding? Is no, that right? I am kidding. I just <laughs> you had me, chef. It is true. I just wanted to see him go. You know. <laughs> so now, which is it? We get this in, and then all we're gonna do is, is, is again two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, equal parts. Okay. We're gonna add a. Oh, we gotta put the sugar. We put the sugar. We put the sugar. Now we're gonna put the flour in, but we're gonna put half. Just half at this. Yeah. Time. We're gonna kind of create layers, like we're making a pastry. Gotcha. That's the only complication, except it's not really a pastry. It's all right. It's it's a bread. It's a bread. So we're gonna beat up the flour. So now we're gonna go back to the berries, and I froze the IQF berries, and that's what I, all the berries that are in the spoon bread downstairs that you guys will have are, are a lot, they're about 70% local berries, and but they're all been used for me and, 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 and touched by me and frozen. But you can use fresh berries. I personally like to use the frozen ones because they're baked, they're cooked. I use my fresh berries for, for prettier things, right. for happier Absolutely. times. And, and that's a good point, because I mean, when the berries come in fresh, especially like the blueberries that we get around the state, you can buy them up when they're fresh, freeze them like that flat on a, on a pan and put them into a, a little Ziploc container and you're good to go. We'll put in the berries. And I wanted to show you, I could even use a skillet. So it you, may be a little bit too much for my batter. Your, your French side coming out again. You love yeah, the skillet. I love the skillet. All right. So we, we, we put the berries and you, you just, you, you want to be able to kind of see the bottom because if you, if you can't really see the bottom when the berries are frozen, there is a lot of water that's gonna come out and a lot of the sugar is left as well. So hence, I take a little powdered sugar and I taste my berries if they're a little too tart and I want them to be a little bit sweeter. You know, obviously in the restaurant I'm going, bam, bam, let's get this done, let's go. <laughs> it's that aggression. Yeah. Right, so a little bit of sugar and again, just taste them and adjust them to how sweet and after practicing the recipe, you'll notice there's two cups of sugar in here, so it's pretty sweet too. So if they're a little bit tart, it's kind of a nice compliment. All right, and, th and then another thing, when my berries are really wet, a nice thing to do, and I always take a little sifter, right? And I do a little bit of cornstarch. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna turn my uh, excess water, which the juice of the water is what we make je jelly with, right? Right. And, the, and, and, the, and the, the actual fruit is what we make jam with, so it's gonna turn that juice into jelly. The sifter, which is, was also used as your spoon to pull out the berries. Yes. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> this is going to come on. You see how it's very thick? It's almost like a cake, right? Right. And then normally, I don't know if I brought, did I bring a spatula? Oh, to your left. Ah, yeah. oh, uh, yeah. you're thinking what I'm thinking. Look, you, you brought two, Chef. Uh, Thank you, Brian. I like the big there one. There we go. So then I always work out because the berries, because if you just mix in the berries a little bit, your cake's gonna turn purple. So I just mix out whatever direction I wanna go. Very good. I mean, obviously out is the direction we're going. Another one of those techniques you learn through time. And yeah, and you, you, you cover that. Mm -hmm. And then I and bake this about 325 if, you're, if you have a convection oven, low fan. Um, sometimes uh, the home models, they don't, you can't turn a convection off. You know, I don't like that. Which, yeah, it's good for other things, but not really baking, right? The exactly. Pan, so. yeah. <laughs> All right, so in your oven, how, uh, boom, uh, 325, and, and basically it is like any cake until it, it stops jiggling or the toothpick. It's such a great rule. The toothpick comes out clean, it's pretty much done. But I just, you know, again, tough. you're, you're, you're multitasking I'll, I'll, I'll touch, hand. I'll touch the pan and see it. You know, once this gets hot, obviously it's gonna be like soup. And if it stops jiggling, just gets a little tight, you're good. All right. So boom, out of the way. And I, there it this is. This is where I pull out the done one, right? Yep, here it is. The reveal. <laughs> wow, look at this, gang. <laughs> we do need a, we do need a spoon. All set? All set. Oh, you got the you got your technique down and everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So here but, it is. But um, I usually I call it spoon bread and I didn't bring a spoon. Oh, darn. Well, you know, we'll, we'll call this spatula bread. Right. <laughs> but basically, you get in there and you scoop out your uh, 
I like this, I like homemade vanilla ice cream. Anything like this, I like have to have ice cream. Oh, so, uh, there's can, those berries. You, Look at that. Can, Absolutely. I just turn it upside down so you can see it. And it's still warm. And then I put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on here. Or in this case, uh, one of the chefs downstairs is like, you don't have ice cream, chef. Watch this first towel. Okay. I feel like the guy selling the equipment, you know. This can also. It also, here it is. The multitasking. A little bit uh, of whipped cream. You know, sifter. And I, oh. I'm a big dollop guy, not that pastry bag. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> this is a good dollop. Forget that. It, right. Boom, right on top. Right. So this is oh. our. This is our. It, it actually based off a Kentucky recipe, it's minus the cornbread, Kentucky berry spoon bread. So, oh, that is an absolutely incredible. <laughs> Chef, we're so glad to have you in Louisville, and uh, we want to keep here. you here. I'll tell you what, absolutely fabulous. Hey, listen, would you stick around? Uh, I want to show you something uh, that I can do over here too. So, uh, you mind sticking around for hey, something? It's my day off. All right, stay with us. When we come back, I have a little specialty cocktail for our friend Chef Ryan Montgomery from Chard. When Secrets of Little Chef's Return. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. I'm coming to you from the Marriott East. The kitchen here is home to Chef Ryan Montgomery. You've been learning the secrets to that flank steak he's been making. Wow. And how about the spoon bread? Uh, one of our lucky studio audience members is going to get a take a taste. What do you say we get back to the action with Tim Laird? Thanks, Kevin. And of course, I'm here with uh, one of our lucky audience members that's going to sample uh, that incredible spoon, board, uh, spoon bread, right? And uh, I'm here with Joanne that actually bought this package uh, with your group on behalf of FEET to benefit autism, right? Mm -hmm. FEET is Families for Effective Autism Treatment, and we've been around for years. We are a family support group, and we are family-based. We're all volunteers, and we help create and um, finance programs that will benefit children with autism. We partner with many other autism providers. Oh, wonderful. City. That's great. And uh, so thank you for contributing to that organization and doing all uh, on behalf of FEET. And now you get to enjoy uh, Chef Ryan's spoon bread with fresh berries and a big dollop That's of delicious. whipped cream. Wow, look at that. All right, Joanne, see what you think. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you for all you do with your feet. All right. It's my turn to uh, cook for you, so to speak, and I'm going to be cooking with fire. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I found this out in the, uh, the marketplace. It's called Early Times Fire Eater, and I have uh, a garnish of a charred peach, so I thought that would be appropriate uh, for charred restaurant. And again, you cook with a lot of fire and you're doing a lot of things charring and uh, talking about all the different fruits and stuff. So uh, I thought I'd put this together. It's really a difficult cocktail. Watch how hard this is. Basically a shaker of ice. I'm going to pour in oh, about that much of my early times fire eater, which is going to be a really nice cinnamon, but it's not going to be like some of those uh, syrupy cinnamon uh, uh, drinks that you think about. So it's going to be just a nice amount of heat and flavor. Give that a couple good shakes. And into our little mini cocktail glasses. Like Garmaze guys from Cuba. Yeah. Every squirt bottle of sauce he goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how he was raised, I guess. There it is. And I'll give a little, uh, actually, yeah, that was a good little shake. That, I, I need to learn that technique. <laughs> All right, wow. here, here we go, chef. A little fire eater uh, early times with a little uh, peach. And you know what's, what's fun about the garnish? a sipping drink? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a sipping, you know. Um, and it's going to be one of the, because one of the things about it is, and again, when it comes up, that, that as you know, when you, when you char these items, I mean, you get all the flavor of the peach and it kind of caramelizes. That's part of the experience of the cocktail. So cheers, uh, chef. Here's to you. Astrovia. All right. Astrovia. Nostrovia. Nasa Strovia. Nasa Strovia. Nasa Strovia. Yeah, a oh. lot of people say Nostrovia, but it's Nasa Strovia. Or in Chicago, they say, hey, cheers. Hey, cheers. <laughs> mm. Very nice. And, and, that peach adds a nice little yeah, element. Really oh, great. Not like, I swear, when I saw her face and she lit up and she's like, this is really good. I'm like, oh my, you brought on Meryl Streep. <laughs> that was great. Anyway, Chef Ryan Montgomery, thanks for joining Pleasure. us today. Chard Restaurant in the Marriott East. you got to go see him.
All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. On behalf of Kevin Harnett, I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. What a great show. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've been learning the secrets from Chef Ryan Montgomery. We appreciate him coming into Kitchen Theater and allowing us to come here and be a part of his location of work at the Louisville Marriott East. If you're looking for the recipes from Ryan, any of the other chefs that have ever appeared on our show, maybe an interactive restaurant guide to help you choose your next meal out, simply look for it at newlocaltv.com. It's right at your fingertips. On behalf of all of us at BMB Productions, we'll see you next time. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harned, and you've been watching Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live is recorded in front of a live studio audience.